What is up, everybody? Greg Treziak here with Pragmatic Works. Today, I'm bringing you the top 10 DAX functions that every Power BI user should know. Now, whether you're a beginner or you're starting to dabble into DAX, I think you might need a refresher on all of these DAX functions because they are super crucial for you to get the most out of Power BI. Now, I want you to stick around to the end because I'm going to give you one of my best hidden secrets for learning DAX. And I want to share that with you, but you got to watch till the very end. I've got 10 DAX functions for you. What I want you to consider is down below in the info for this video, you're going to find your very own file that you can use and follow along right alongside me. I want you to keep that in mind. And I've got that up right now showcasing 10 functions that I think are super important. Are you ready to dive in? I know I am. Let's get into some DAX. First function here is the supreme aggregation. This is going to be the sum function. What I have set up here is every single page is going to showcase all of that, what you're going to need to do to learn these DAX functions. For example here, let's take our first visual. It's just a table showing our sales territory country. It also has the sum of sales amount. That is an implicit measure. That is actually what we have. If I click on the visual here, you'll notice those green check marks. We have our measure coming from the measures table. That's a pro tip. You can organize your measures that way. Super fun, super easy to do. And I have dim sales territory, which is my countries, but fact internet sales, I have this sales amount column. Now, this sales amount column here is showcasing to me a implicit aggregation, which is defaulted to sum. That matches exactly with my measure over here, total sales, where I just created sum, the fact internet sales table, sales amount column. You'll notice here that this is going to be broken down the exact same way. The totals, the values, they are working the same. Here's the benefit of using an explicit measure. An explicit measure is one that we've created. And because we've created it, that means we are going to be able to then reference it in more complicated DAX. So one of the essential things that you can do is start by building those basic aggregations as measures, store them nicely in that measures table, and you can get to work with a lot more complicated DAX. Speaking of a little bit more complicated DAX, let's move on to our next function here, which is the supreme function calculate. O-M-G. Never, never, never forget calculate. This is the mega one, the extreme one. What calculate does is it allows you to edit the filters. And in this case, I actually have a unique look at this for us. As you can see here, we still have that same sum of total sales in our explicit measure. But right alongside it, I have total sales NA. What is going on with that, right? So let me click on the table here and show you. Total sales NA, I use calculate. I said, hey, tell me total sales, but only when the sales territory group is equal to North America. You see how this function works, and I'll copy this out here, is let's say this wasn't there. Once you add that comma, you're moving from the expression, which is my measure or something I want to mostly aggregate, could be others, then my filters. And the filter I chose was, hey, only when it's North America. I could change this, right? If I wanted to make a quick change here, I could just go into the text box and say, hey, you know what? I want to check out what's going on in the Europe sales. I'll keep it North America for now. But this is one of the cornerstone calculations that will allow you to do some awesome, complicated DAX. Tell you what, so much of what I handle in virtual mentoring sessions here at Pragmatic Works revolves around we were using Calculate. Definitely one to check out. Speaking of manipulating filters, we have the filter function. This one is a fun one because it's usually used to create a new table that has been filtered down. For example, here I've got the countries, the sales amounts, sum of sales amount, but 
I use this filter function to actually create for me an entire new table. Here I have high value sales and it is its own table. It's actually a replication of fact internet sales here, but I said filter it to when total sales is over a thousand. I really want to see the high value customers. This is one way I could do it. You might be wondering, okay, Greg, hold up, turn the car around. You have another measure going on here. And I do. Let's bring it back to calculate for a moment. If I go to my measures table, I have HV total sales, which matches with this filtered table. Uh huh. All right, here, tell me total sales, but modify the sales amount to be over a thousand. This is only going to look for those sales that are over a thousand and then give me the total. Pretty awesome. And what's happening here is you can see. We're using sum, calculate, and filter, all of those hand in hand working together. And that's one of the big things we like to teach here at Pragmatic Works is this whole interplay and exchange between these functions to get the most out of what you do with your DAX. Next one I want to look at here is related. Related is a awesome way to move around your data model. A lot of times when we build a really good data model, I think the one we have here is pretty good for today. We have some uses where maybe we're not able to correctly reference other tables. Related allows us to kind of force through that and connect to those tables. So if I go over to the report view here, you'll notice there's a little bit of a change going on here. Let me show you a little bit of what's happening here. I have a sales not USA and I made this table using both filter and related. I use related to go to a completely separate area, the dim sales territory country table and look for everything that was not the USA. Now it's kind of fun here. I use this nice little symbol to say, hey, it's not the US. Lots of ways to do that. You could have some variety, but this allowed me to go to that other table that maybe usually I wouldn't be able to traditionally. What about a distinct count? All right. I need to find the unique customers. Well, distinct count is there for you. Distinct count is pretty easy to work with. If we take, let's say, for example, a count, which is the count of the customer key, we have quite a few customers. Undoubtedly, those customers we hope would actually come back and be repeated customers. For that reason, we have a unique customers calculation here where we have distinct count of the same information. This is just going to give me the distinct list of those customers that are coming to purchase. Pretty nice. So you might want to use that, especially if you're dealing with multiple events or you're trying to calculate something across that fact table where we know we have multiple things going on. What about some logic, right? Let's throw in an if statement. If statements are super cool. And what I've done here is I tried to categorize my sales based on high, low, kind of medium. Now I have total sales here, but I also have a sales category measure. And this used some if-based logic. In this case, I'm doing some if-based logic to say if total sales is greater than 3 million, it's considered a high volume area. Everything else is low. If you're having trouble thinking about logical statements, the way that I think about it is if I'm hungry, I go to the kitchen and I grab a snack. If I'm not, then maybe I continue doing something else. Using that kind of plain language knowledge and just thinking about it that way makes this a little less scary and a little bit better to work with. I really like doing that. Up next, we've got divide. Now, what traditionally people do is they do kind of like a forward slash situation and they just let it ride. That typically is okay, but the divide function is a nice one because it allows you to safely divide by a zero case. I have profit here, which is another way to show how awesome DAX can be. I have sales minus costs, give me profit, but I wanted to find profit margin. And in that case, I use divide to help me out. What is that profit into the total sales? 
From there, I could format this to get a percentage. I could change it all up. Super, super nice. So maybe instead of that forward slash situation you got going on, try using divide and you're going to be in a little bit of a safer spot. We also have iterators. Iterators are awesome. Rank X is one of my favorites. Iterators are meant to iterate across the rows. So as they calculate, they're looking at each thing row by row. What I did is I wanted to find a rank. And I like these rank functions because so much of what we do, we want to find where do the countries actually rank? Where does the sales rank? Where does the product rank for us? So I have rank X and I said, hey, you know what? Based on total sales, give me a ranking. Well, here's the thing. Every single country is different. They have unique total sales or they have sales minus costs or whatever I want to find here, I can look at at the row level. And what we can see here is if I flip total sales to be descending by their amount, we see that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven based on their sales volume. Really, really nice for quick looks and rankings. You can also modify the ranking there to be really kind of sweet. Timeout. I know we're going through a lot of these functions, but I want to rapid fire, give you a bunch of great ones to start utilizing. Here's the thing. You are going to want some more practice. So I think we're ready for a quick tip. One of the things that I really want you to keep out a look for is the Pragmatic Works On Demand Learning. Check out the Intro to DAX class here or some of the other DAX classes here where you're going to be able to really dive in and practice alongside instructors like me. We're going to take a little bit more time, a little bit more care to get you exactly what you need. And hey, if you're looking to get an on-demand learning subscription, make sure to use Greg40 and you're going to get 40% off of that subscription. That's my pro tip. A lot of people might know this, but I used to be a high school geography teacher and my foray into data was really based on pragmatic works. So I'm a product of what we create. I hope you can vibe with that as well and enjoy it. But Needless to say, we got some more DAX to get into. Speaking of formatting, format function is an awesome, smooth one. What I have here is I created a short date as a column in this here. I took that longer date key and I just made it into what I wanted, which was month, month, day, year. So what if I want to mix this up? right? I can simply use format to modify based on a coded system what I want. If I do four M's here, look at what I get for short date now. I can get the full month name. I think that's pretty awesome. It's kind of like alchemy. Like I'm changing one thing into another. I don't know. That's pretty sweet. I like the way it looks. We also have concatenate. There's a couple of ways we can do this, but I want to show you this as our last nice easy one here where we've concatenated two values. Right here, I've got first name and I've got last name. So I wanted a full name. Well, what I've created here is full name and I just concatenated the first and the last name and there's nothing in between. Uh, it doesn't look very good, right? I kind of need that space in between to actually set up something a little bit better. So what I've done instead is I made a better full name which I added a piece here. I added a simple space. Now I've wrapped that space in two double quotes. This allows me to add this as a character. I also can change it to be, let's say, maybe a dash. And there we go. It looks pretty awesome. Here's what I want to let you know about looking through this sample file. Please be encouraged to work around it, use it, figure out what you need from it. Remember, whenever I want to add in one of these measures, I have a measures table. The measures table hosts all of those measures. So everything we've looked at in this course, you can go right over to the measures table. You can enjoy it. You can play around in there. You even can add measures here. I want to give you a bit of homework and I want you to answer down in the comments below what is the answer to this. All right, so we're going to put a lot of this together. What I'd like you to answer for me is what is the total profit for Canada only when the sale was above $1,000? 
How would you write that out in DAX? Could you do it? Or how would you kind of manipulate that visually? Let me know down below. This is a challenge. All right, I'm giving you some homework. I know you can do it with flying colors. So little extra bonus if you're sticking around as well. If you ever want to create a measures table, the easiest way to do so is using the enter data option here. This is just a little bonus to help you with your organization because I know it's really been a game changer for me. When you click on enter data here, I know it seems a little bit cheesy and you don't want to use this as a data source. But the quick tip here is if you put a symbol and then name this something like measures table, what you're going to find out is that this is going to go to the very top of what you have. I have my name this way, so let me show you this. I'll just go ahead and do two little dashes. Since the right hand data pane alphabetizes, if I load this in, it's going to go right up to the top and that can store my measures. Now I can mix and match these because I have this measures table. Well, maybe I want all of my profit related things in that table. Super easily, I could say, hey, you know what? Let's go to profit, change the home table here to the other measures table. It'll move right on over. Once you've done that, you are free to delete the extra kind of <laughs> fake column here I had, which was just Greg was here. I could delete that from the model. And now I have a measures table. Right now I actually have two. Just a quick tip to help you organize, keep everything nice and situated. Okay, my pro tip again, go to the on-demand learning, check out Greg 40 and start with that intro to DAX class. I guarantee you, if you wanna get speedy like me with DAX, that is one place to start. If you're feeling a little adventurous, you know what to do. Check out the more advanced DAX courses. They're going to put you in the right frame of mind and really get you situated with using the awesome function calculate. All right. So let me know down below which one of these top 10 essentials is your favorite. Make sure to do your homework. And remember, this has been Greg Treziak with Pragmatic Works. Stay pragmatic.